What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Uh, I want to show you guys before we get into anything, uh, I got a section of this garage that we're turning into an office and I got some guys working on doing the flooring right now. We got some epoxy floor and I can't go in there right now because they literally just finished. They just left right now and they're coming back tomorrow to finish it. But they laid the base coat down and I can go around from the front and I'll show you guys from the window. It looks amazing. Let me show you one sec. So like, there's my prelude, you can't really see, but this is the section that I usually work in right here, okay? But this section over here, we're turning into an office. And I, that's gonna be the entrance there, but I don't wanna go in right now. Let's see, can we, can I see? Yeah, you can kinda get an idea there. It's kinda hard to see, but I don't wanna go in there right now. But man, it looks really, really good. I will show you guys when it's all done, I'll take you guys in there. Um, but what we're gonna be doing is working on motor mounts. I just wanted to quickly show you guys that because I'm excited, but yeah, today we are working on the motor mounts. Uh, I'm just gonna get this done. Um, well, I mean, hopefully I'm gonna get this done. I don't know if I'm gonna get this done. Uh, but we're gonna get going on it. We're gonna keep working on it. Um, I have an idea of how we're gonna go forward with this. So uh, let's just pick, off, uh, pick up where we were last. So let's do it. All right, so in part one of doing this uh, engine bolt up to the car, uh, I made these plates, and these plates are gonna be what get the motor mounts actually bolted to the subframe. Uh, Cause right now I got, already got the motor mounts bolted up to the block. Uh, I just gotta figure out how to get everything bolted to the car. So that's what I'm working on today. I just gotta get it all fitted and get everything uh, positioned properly. And once I get that done, I can figure out exactly where these plates are gonna go and work on getting, work on getting these in and we're gonna do some welding and we're gonna add some structure to this and everything. So uh, let's get to it. All right, well, first of all, I got the heat cranked up in here right now because I gotta get that other side uh, warm enough for the epoxy to uh, cure properly. But uh, let me show you what I'm working on here right now. So I'm trying to get the car level to make sure everything's uh, level with the car compared to the block and everything. Uh, but in order to do that, I need to use my jack, but right now I'm using my jack to hold up the tailstock and I got to get it a little bit higher so that I can just transfer everything over to these blocks of wood instead. But before I do that, I got to come over here and I got to cut some more so that I can raise this a little bit higher. So basically I got to cut more out of the car, raise the transmission up a little bit higher, rest it onto the block so that I can use my jack so that I can raise the car on one side to make it level because the springs are not the same. Um, I guess, I don't know what's going on, but I'm gonna level the car out first and then once I get the car level, I'm gonna use that to level the engine to make sure that everything's square with each other and then we're gonna figure out where those plates are gonna be going. Okay, so I basically got the entire transmission in the car now. I've cut it out so that I could raise it enough so that the tailstock's pointing roughly in the right direction. And I've freed up my jack by putting some wood underneath the tailstock to hold it up in place for now. And now I'm able to use my jack on this side to raise the car a little bit to get it level, as you can see right here. And then I also got the block level as well. So you can see we're pretty level there. And this looks like it can go a touch up. So maybe I'll adjust this here, but now I'll be able to mark where the plates need to go, right here and right there. All right, well, I'm quickly realizing that I'm not gonna be able to get a marker in here to mark that. So what I'm thinking of doing is getting some vice grips and uh, clamping these down and then removing the bolts on both sides and then pulling the engine out while keeping the motor mounts in. 
Uh, and then that should be able to help me mock this up. Alright, who knows if this is even going to work. I got these in, but honestly, might not even be enough to hold these in, so... Let's just see what happens. Alright, well that's not going to work because I can't get enough vice grips on this thing uh, to hold them in the right spot. So I'm just going to have to find a way to mark these uh, as I'm going. And uh, yeah, hope for the best really. Alright, perfect. I found some crayons. There you go. I should be able to mark it now with this. All right, well, I just marked out the uh, holes and I'm hoping that when I lift this engine out of there, I can still see them because it took me a long time to get this engine exactly where I wanted it to sit. So I really hope it, I can actually see these marks. Okay, so not the greatest marks, but I can see one, two, three. Now here I think I only got two, but that's okay. Here's the one, and here's the two. The third one was kind of off in the middle of nowhere, so that's what the plates are for. So while I'm doing this, I'm actually realizing that the three holes that I planned on using might not actually be the best holes to be using. Uh, just because the subframe, there's kind of a limited uh, area that I could use. So it might not necessarily be like the far left, far right, and the middle bottom one. I might be like using two offset and one. Should be fine, honestly. Uh, but once I get these plates in, then I'll be able to tell better. All right, guys, so I've marked it in three spots. Now, if I line up my motor mounts, how they just were, is going to be lined up just like this. And it might be hard to tell from over there, but... I should be able to get a bolt in here easily, and I should be able to get a bolt in here easily. So two out of the three seem like they would be okay. But the third one might not be the best over here, so I may need to use this middle one. Now, the reason why I didn't use these ones, and I chose to use those three, well, if you look, there's a lip here. And this part and this part sit flat against the frame. And same with the middle portion here. That's why I chose to use the middle on the bottom, and then the top two on the outers here. But I might end up having to use the middle here and maybe put some washers or a piece of metal in the back so that it sits flat. But at least I can work with this now. I got two bolts and each one of these uh, so it, I mean they're in place they're where they need to be I think so before I go any further I'm gonna take the engine and drop it in and these are pretty sturdy right now so I'm gonna see if I can actually still bolt it up and uh, make sure that nothing moved a little bit so just to make sure all right well this is exactly why I was trying to test fit it because it seems that this motor mount is actually a little bit too low so I'm probably gonna have to take this out and try to raise that a little bit higher. If I do that, then I should have, um, I should be able to bolt this engine into the motor mounts and have everything bolted into the frame. Three days later. All right, so while I'm doing these motor mounts here, uh, every time I go to put this engine back in and out, um, I'm still hitting the firewall a little bit and it's just making it a little bit difficult. Uh, but the other thing is that distributor is not gonna fit. I mean, it's not right there, but I'm going to be putting it in right now. It's not going to fit. There's no way that firewall is going to be hidden. So uh, I think while I'm doing this at the same time, I'm going to be, because uh, I did have a comment mentioning trying to fit that distributor in there. So that's what I'm going to be working on. All right, guys. So this is the distributor that Fred gave me. Uh, it's pretty much the biggest one that you can fit or find for the uh, small block Chevy that I got. And the reason why we're using this one is because if I end up using a different one or or whatever, it's either going to be this size or smaller. That's because the coil pack is on top here as opposed to the other ones that are separate. So this makes it the biggest cap 
the biggest biggest distributor. Um, so if I make this one fit, then any other one that I use down the line will most likely fit. So we're gonna be taking this, taking the engine out and dropping this into the uh, back of the block there and then putting it back in. Um, and yeah, just wanna show you guys the distributor before we went ahead. All right, good news. I just went to go pull the engine out, but I looked at the motor mount and I'm like, you know what, let me just see how close I am, uh, actually how much I have to move the motor mount to make it work. And I ended up getting both of them bolted in. I don't know, I mean, I guess it's good that I took a break because I just need to clear mine, but I went back to it and I don't need to move the motor mounts. They're bolted in right now. So that's good. The only thing I need to worry about right now is the distributor. All right, guys, now for the purpose of this video, uh, my head's chopped off. There you go. So all we gotta do for me, for what I'm doing right now for testing, uh, for the fitment, I just gotta drop that in and I'm done. But when we go to install this uh, later on, when we're actually building the engine, the way we install this matters because this gets spun by the camshaft and depending on the rotation and the position of where we do this, we can have our timing off. So we wanna make sure that we install this properly and we get the timing right on the money. And that involves getting the engine at top dead center, making sure that everything's properly uh, installed. And then uh, this goes in according. Uh, and there's also a fork, I believe in the back here that holds it down. There's a whole bunch of stuff that needs to go into this. But right now, I don't really care. I just need to know how this sits in here and how much space this is gonna take up into my firewall. This is crazy. I honestly think I can crawl through this hole and get to the inside of the car from here. Obviously I'm taking out a bunch of metal right now and so there's probably guys watching this thinking like, wow, there's like no structure left to this car. Well, I mean, I don't have really anything in there right now, so I don't have anything to worry about. But once it's all said and done, I'm gonna be reinforcing this. I just need to fit everything in right now and then I will be adding the strength where needed back to this car. All right, well, I don't even have the cap on right now and I'm already basically touching. I'm almost where I need to be for the motor mount. So that's basically where the engine needs to sit. So I can guarantee that that's not gonna work where it is um, without chopping up way more of that. But I really don't wanna get into all that because there's some real structure in this part here. So I am gonna look into a different option. So obviously my harmonic balancer is not in right now, uh, but I have seen online and there was actually a comment in my other video where a guy was telling me, hey, you know what, just to avoid your distributor issue, why don't you look into doing a harmonic balancer distributor kit? And basically it relocates the distributor from the back of the block to the front uh, for this exact purpose. A lot of people have clearance issues, whether they get bigger carburetors or if they're fitting an engine into a car where it just doesn't belong. Um, we're gonna have to figure out how to move that to the back or from the back to the front here. Um, and I don't think it's an issue. I just think it's a little costly. Well guys, I mean, that's pretty good. I know what my issue is. Uh, I'm pretty sure I have a solution already for it. I'm gonna look into that relocation kit for the distributor. Um, but the other thing I'm pretty excited about is I might possibly be getting a new vehicle. Stay tuned for that. Subscribe if you wanna see that because I'm definitely gonna be putting it on my channel if I do go ahead with the purchase. I also possibly found a transmission uh, for this build, the one that I'm gonna actually be using because right now this is just a shell. It's empty. There's nothing in that one. Uh, but just using it for mock-up. So I'm pretty excited about that. And again, guys, thank you very much. This channel is gaining a lot of traction, more than I expected. Um, so I do really appreciate that. Every time I go in and I check my channel, I see what I got on my videos, my likes, my comments, all the new subs, it feels great. Uh, so thank you guys for that. And if you can, I'm sure you already have in the past videos, but I'll do it again. Just click once on that little thumbs up, hit the like button. And if you haven't already subscribed, welcome to the channel. Hope you liked the video today and stay tuned because there's a lot more stuff on its way. You guys will not be disappointed. I always try to pump out the best content that I can. Thank you guys again for watching. We will see you next week.